I also wanted to really quickly go through the NCCN um, genetic familial breast ovarian pancreatic cancer guidelines that just came out yesterday. So just some big picture highlights that I wanted to mention to you all. And again, I've um, put the page numbers um, of L A 10 of 11, but as well the page number, if you download the PDF, I find that knowing the page number is sometimes useful as well. So I put that in red. So what we did here is for the principles of cancer risk assessment and counseling, we know that a lot of genetic testing is going out outside of um, a genetics service. So just going through what are some of the minimal components that we still think should be discussed. So this is, um, again, kind of through point of care testing, what are some of the elements that we still think would be really important to discuss in the oncology or the primary care setting. We also clarified that it's appropriate to test unaffected family members who aren't necessarily the best testable. We had, um, I had become aware that there are um, certain insurance companies that are using NCCN to sometimes deny coverage for unaffected family members. And again, that isn't in the spirit of what we were trying to do. So again, we just made it clearer. It's no different in terms of the spirit of what was already in there, but saying it is appropriate to test unaffected family members who meet testing criteria. So that's in these pages, page nine, as well as page 34. For the breast cancer testing criteria, I know a lot of people were probably interested in what we were gonna do in view of the ASCO and ASBR guidelines that had come out. So on page 26, we have actually updated the testing criteria for high, penet high penetrance breast cancer susceptibility genes. And we revised it to consider testing at or below age 65. And it used to be age less than 60. So that is the change. And we did add a footnote T saying, testing includes breast cancer genes plus other inherited cancer genes consistent with family phenotype. And then some other changes related to ovarian cancer. We added a footnote to include some of the other types of ovarian cancer that can be seen in other gene mutation carriers. And then on page 48, so BRCA A205, um, in the BRCA pathogenic, likely pathogenic variant positive management, we talked, uh, we put in um, a statement about uh, serous tubal intraepithelial carcinoma or stick lesion is found for the consultation with a gynecologic oncologist would be important. And then for the gene tables, um, so gene A for ATM, colorectal cancer risk was added, but really we just referred to the colon endometrial gastric guidelines. For BRCA1, we did add a footnote about reduced penetrance BRCA1 R1699Q variant, which has a lower risk of breast cancer. Um, and then indicating that screening should be individualized. And then for check two, the colon cancer or colon endometrial gastric cancer guidelines, the genetic familial one has removed colon cancer risk um, as part of check two. So we removed that as well. Um, we also added another lower risk allele. We had the ILE 157 THR already in there, but we added the serine 428 phenylalanine one. Um, and then again, talking about how additional cancer risk management may not be needed because these, um, uh, these variants impart risks of less than 1.4 fold. And then another big one for uh, pancreatic cancer screening on page 52, we added that, um, consideration for pancreatic cancer screening uh, for ATM and BRCA2 carriers beginning at age 50 or 10 years younger than earliest uh, exocrine pancreatic cancer diagnosis in the family, whichever is earlier, and the family history criteria or requirement 
for these gene carriers was removed.